Thank you. Mr. Breyer, your floor. Thank you. I would like to thank in particular the European Data Protection Board for your um, ongoing work on uh, this um, issue of great concern. Um, I've always said that the privacy, so-called privacy shield is a farce that doesn't uh, deserve its name because it doesn't address the fundamental shortcomings of the previous safe harbour regime, which is that it doesn't do anything to protect us effectively from mass surveillance as exposed uh, by Edward Snowden. And um, the opinion of the Advocate General has exposed several shortcomings of um, this um, decision. But um, I would like to stress that the fact that member states in the EU are responsible for national security doesn't mean that what the US does under the guise of national security was outside of scrutiny, right? So there's a difference between competence within the EU and what we should consider when um, deciding on adequacy um, of other states and governments. We shouldn't turn a blind eye on what they are doing in the context of national security. The problem is not just the violation of privacy that comes with these um, mass surveillance programs, but it's also the, the ensuing human rights violation in the use of such data in the context of the US war on terror. And their practices include extrajudicial traditional killings, unlawful detention, no-fly lists, uh, freezing of assets, etc. So there's also a lack of protection of fundamental rights in general. And you've already gone into the problem of judicial redress. In fact, um, even the few protections that have been agreed are not enforceable in US courts of law, which uh, renders them ineffective. And it's not just a problem of the standing requirement, but it's also a problem of the state secrets privilege, which means that the US government can squash any court challenge by saying that disclosing information would um, threaten its national security which has repeatedly been used to squash uh, court challenges in the US to um, uh, um, violations of fundamental rights. Now, the idea and the proposed solution that data protection authorities should individually stop flows of data um, uh, um, that are affected by those shortcomings is unrealistic because all flows of data are affected by the same shortcomings and therefore I hope very much that the court will again um, invalidate this um, privacy shield regime. Now I have a question to the Commission in that regard. If the court does invalidate um, privacy shield, um, there have been attempts in the US um, to establish a um, certain level of data protection, particularly by uh, California, as you've mentioned, um, um, seeing that most companies are IT companies are located in the Silicon Valley. Now, if a US state such as California decided to apply for an adequacy decision, would the Commission um, consider such an application? Is it possible for a single state to make such an application. Thank you very much. I would try to answer uh, all the question, maybe uh, starting with the one which is not the simplest, but the one uh, uh, to which I, give, I can give a simple answer, which is a yes, the California question. Uh, the GDPR, as, as we negotiated it, uh, uh, with many of the members that were present here, uh, provides expressly for the possibility to recognize as adequate a so-called partial adequacy, if you want, a uh, territory, an entity, uh, which is, for instance, uh, uh, at sub-federal level, because we, when we developed the GDPR, we actually anticipated that in some uh, federal systems, uh, certain uh, parts of that system, certain entities, certain states uh, could uh, decide for all sorts of reasons, uh, also because they're competent to decide so, uh, uh, to uh, have a comprehensive uh, privacy uh, legislation. So the Californian process is ongoing, as we know, and it's interesting to see that it's an ongoing process and there are new amendments and new ideas that are now uh, put on the table and probably uh, to, to the ballot box. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, the, in principle, the answer is yes, of course, then it's a question of whether California and 
whatever Californian legislation there will be, uh, this one or the one we violated fulfills uh, the condition. But that also brings me to another point. That's the, at the end, the solution. So if we want to have a, a long-term solution, they have to be indeed uh, based uh, on uh, law, on statutes that are as, as comprehensive uh, as, as possible. Uh, and that's why also, and I know that on this, we have heard about a lot of differences of view of, of concern, but there's one area on which we all agree here, and, that, that, and I know it's a message that you are uh, very strongly channeling to your US uh, uh, counterparts uh, when meeting members of Congress. That's why also uh, the ongoing work on a US federal privacy bill is so uh, important.